You're listening to the Bonnery Show. It's eight in the evening. Tune in every night at eight to listen to the Bonnery Show on Irish News Radio or ITV.ie. And you can contact anything that you've heard or if anything you'd like to discuss at news at irishnews.net. I'll be talking in a few minutes to a very interesting guest. She's well known in Ireland. She ran for presidency. Her name is Sarah. Um, She dresses up and she's quite an interesting character. She's a huge fan of Trump. Um, She ran for presidency and she didn't get it, but she's quite known as um, she dresses up and all sorts of things. So we'll be talking to Sarah and I'll introduce you to her in a few minutes. Thank you for listening on The Bonnery Show. We were talking about abortion, we were talking about immigration, the open borders, and the new parties that need to come about, and that have to come about. Difficult situation at the moment, and it's getting worse. So, morning show, it's going to be called the Sarah and Bond Show. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> so it's the Sarah and Bond Show every Friday. So every Friday at eight o'clock in the evening, tune in to listen to the Sarah and Bond Show. And we'll be talking about immigration. We'll be talking about abortion. We'll be talking about all the challenges that Ireland is facing through a government that hates us. It's an anti-Irish government. Um, so the, they're the issues that we will be talking about. So yeah, like um, I, I don't know, Sarah, the, the abortion thing is just such a mess and I, I, I don't think that we're ever going to get back from that and I can't ever see a way of getting back to the ape and it's such, it's such a shame, it's such a horrific thing that babies will be killed in a very short short time and Harris and the rest of the government are forcing it through in lightning they want the killing to start as soon as possible um and it's going to be a force on doctors i I actually feel really 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 sorry for doctors um because it'll be a choice that they will either have to do this possibly lose their job or leave the country because um they're not going to be be given a choice to do this it's horrible 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 well, seemingly I seen on Facebook um, a friend of mine posted a message and he literally said that they're bringing in abortion and, um, you know, killing weapons into this certain hospital and the nurse is really upset by this and she doesn't know what to do and obviously she's pro-life and this, this message is out loudly on Facebook. I actually put it up there on my Twitter. I mean, this is going to freak all these lovely pro-life nurses out of it and they're just going to get up and leave the country. They, they, they won't be able to handle all of this. So we're going to lose lots of people who are who are giving us great health care. And, you know, it'll be a kick up the bum to Ireland because nobody really wants this, especially our um, our health care professionals. They just, they just don't want it. And... Uh, yeah, that's the reality of things now. Yeah, I, I, like these sort of chats should have happened before the referendum. Like, how many doctors? But I do actually believe, like you, it was rigged because they didn't have these ch- um, chats, which they should have. How many doctors were willing to perform it? How many nurses were going to pick up little skulls and little hands and little legs and throw them in a dustbin? How many people were really willing and when the bag split open and all these little heads and these little legs and these little arms fell out what was going to happen when those doctors those healthcare people needed psychiatric help because this is like being in a war zone yes like you're going to have postnatal depression after this or not postnatal depression but post post um depression from from being like it's like being in a war there is no other way of understanding it well, right you see little heads what's going to happen is um you know nurses are going to walk in to a room and they're going to be pro-life nurses and then there's going to be a shortage of staff 
And then the pro-life nurses are probably going to be asked, okay, can you just help out here? It's an emergency. And they're going to be like, no. And it's going to happen with the doctors as well. They're going to be like, no, I'm pro-life. I'm not, I'm not having anything to do with this. And then yes. there's going to be all this bullying going on. It's just not right. I mean, the, as you said, Absolutely. it should have been all talked about. So, but even I think on the pro-death side, you know, as the pro-death doctors even said, even the ones that said, you know, that they voted yes, it didn't mean that they were willing to perform it. They just think, oh, yeah, that, that it should be choice. But they even said, I wouldn't do it. It's not for me. I don't, I'm not qualified. I wouldn't want to be qualified on that. I wouldn't be comfortable with it. And even the nurses who were pro-death and said yes, said they didn't want to perform it either. So even those will be forced in, even the ones that said yes, they don't want to perform it. They don't want anything to do with it. They may think that, that it's okay, that it's available in hindsight, and they don't really think about what's available. They just think it's like a choice of some sort. They haven't really put the whole thing together. But for them to actually put these little heads, and little legs, and little bodies into a bin bag is where the problem is going to arise. Because even if you vote yes, it's a very bloody difficult thing to do. That is like being in a war. And there is no counselling service for these doctors or nurses who have to perform death on these babies. Murder, horrific, painful, torturous murder are going to be given any help for it. Imagine you going into a war and you blowing up people and yeah. being told that you will not get any help. Like, if this is natural, it's okay, it's like a period. And you can see perfectly well, it's a head, it's a formed head, it's a leg, it's an arm. That is not a fucking period. That is not a clump of cells. That is a baby. Exactly. And you could put it in a bin. And you're not going to receive any health, serve, any health care afterwards. And you're going to need it. Like, you'll have to be a psych psycho not to feel anything about throwing a baby in a bin or chopped up baby in a bin. Who could actually do that? Well, psychopaths. <laughs> but even the psychopaths, I mean, even people who are thinking, oh, this is the right thing. That's a bloody hard thing when you're faced to do it. Put them in a bin. It's just a horror show, really. Absolutely. A constant horror show. And the thing about it is, like, post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah, that's what I was supposed to say. Thank you, Sarah. You're welcome. Do... You know, has the HSE, do they realise what they're doing to their professionals? Like, they, they need to set up, you know, counselling services for these doctors and nurses that are going to be forced into these situations. Absolutely. And they are seriously going to have... <laughs> Like, who could sleep through that? It's just... And even the doctors who come across that bag of dead babies and it spills out on the ground. Can you imagine? Like, this is... And it should be open to, to these hospitals being sued because it's not like, you know, in the UK they have the abortion clinic so the doctors decide to go in to murder. That's fine. Nurses decide to go in to murder. That's fine. The people who are cleaning up the bodies know they're cleaning up dead bodies. They've all signed on and decided that. People who are going into everyday normal hospitals who are having babies and have gone into this to give life and to help life and to preserve life, who are doctors and who respect their professions, are nurses who respect their professions, are cleaners who think it's a normal hospital. Do not expect to be opening a bag and a dead baby falls out. And this is the reality of what's going to happen. Well, They're the not going to disappear because people think you just become unpregnant as if you get this magic little injection and everything goes away. That <laughs> baby still has to come out. You still have to give birth, physical birth to that baby or yeah. it's taken out by parts. Either way, that baby has to come out. Yeah. It doesn't just disappear magically, like you get a magic pill and whoa, you become unpregnant. There is no such thing as unpregnant. You just become a mother who murdered her child. There's no such thing as a magic thing. Oh, I'm unpregnant now. That was lucky, wasn't it? Like, it, they're so stupidly brainwashed to think that there is a magic, like a magic thing that will happen to them. What they're, think what they're not thinking about is the fact that we have lots of children and adults who were 
on waiting lists for you know scoliosis operations and um there's like elderly people dying on trolleys and i mean the, the health system itself we don't have the room for these abortion clinics you know this is just adding more pressure to doctors and nurses another Absolutely. thing is, yeah another thing as well like as i said in in an earlier interview that imagine giving birth and then all of a sudden you know you're you're having a cup of tea and then you're talking to a woman who just murdered their baby and you're all happy because you've just given birth and then this woman is like oh i just you know i just had an abortion then you like it, it wouldn't be fair to put these two women in the same room because that's Absolutely. adding more psychological post-traumatic stress for both women yeah, absolutely. And even that 1% that they love to talk about, the pro, pro death, that love to talk about that 1%, that, you know, the fetal abnormality, that 1% that they loved and loved and harped on harp. Majority of them do not want to be sitting in with another woman who just said, oh, you know what? I decided I was putting on too much weight. Um, I was going. And they, they go mad when people say this because they don't think women think like that. Yes, women do think like that. Yeah. Um, I, I decided I didn't want to put on weight or, I you know, I was going on a holiday and I broke up with that boyfriend anyway. So, you know, and he was a very abusive. Anyway, yeah. I didn't like him too much. And I got him into a new relationship and he's such a lovely guy. So, you know, I didn't want this baby. So, um, and it's only, you know, it's only like a period anyway. So what's the big deal? That person who's suffering who would have loved that child, that 1% yeah. that they all go on about as if all the abortions are that 1%, does not want to be sitting in with that selfish bitch who just murdered her child because she broke up with her boyfriend and to spite him because you know what, he was a bastard anyway. And yeah. I'm in a new relationship, so fuck him. And that attitude, and that is the majority, that is 99% of abortions are those selfish cows who for one reason or another decided that they were going to murder their child. And it, that woman sitting beside the person who had to, had to have no choice but the fetal abnormality situation or whatever, have to go through this and would have had love to have ha been able to give life to that child. And that, what's going to happen is they're all going to be in the same room as one another. And that's going to mess up the psychology of people's Absolutely. minds even more. Completely. It's like and they as if haven't even thought about this. Or they're going to even be worse into the woman who miscarried. Now miscarried at three, four months. The woman, she's watching this woman who had killed her child at the same stage as she miscarried. The child that she really, really wanted and tried for years and years to get. And she yeah. miscarried this baby and she is devastated, broken heart and bitter towards the world. Bitter because you go through an awful lot through, through miscarriage. And you're seeing this woman who just murdered her baby. This isn't a healthy recipe for anybody. And you just want, she just wanted one chance to have this child. And this, this is the reason why we need, because they are selfish little skits, majority, 99%, yeah. we need to pay them. We need to say, we will give you higher wage to have, for each week you're pregnant, we will pay you. And we need yeah. to set up a charity fund of some sort where we can set up a charity fund where we can reach out and say, if you're on a crisis pregnancy, you reach well, every week after 20 weeks, we will pay you to stay pregnant. Yeah. I love it. And and then if they decide during that time that they want to, to not proceed with the, the, the pregnancy, as they like to call it, then they have to sign a form that we can take the child out while yeah. it's still alive, that it's not murdered, that we can take the child. After 20 weeks, we will pay it each week, but they have to sign a form that we can take the child out and it, has, it can sign off all rights or whatever it wants to do, but the child has to come out alive. Yeah. Because you can take the child out from 20 weeks on now. We just get we get a a, a charity kind of fundraising going, and we get incubators, and we take the child out, and, and the mother can still be paid each week. But instead of the child being killed inside, that's the only guarantee. So we can take it out. Uh, we can do a C-section, 
take the child out of life, and she can walk away. It has less implications on her health. It's safer for her in every way. Exactly, and, and everybody safe. wins. The child everybody. wins. The father of the child wins. The mother wins. You know, and every, the population decide. wins. And he can decide as well. If the C-section, we can let him know whether he'd want a chance of adopting it, or there will be hundreds and thousands of people who cannot, who've gone through IVF, who've done everything to have a child, hundreds and thousands, we can have a pick of anybody who would love that child. And that yeah. we have to, to look at. That is what we need to set up a charity service, and we will pay those women, but the only guarantee is that they have to allow the child for a C-section, and that is the only thing they can walk out and never see it, and they can pretend the baby is dead if that's what they prefer. But that's the only difference is that we, we take the baby out by a C-section from 20 weeks on. Yeah. And I think that's what we really need to start looking at setting up a charity because, um, other than that, you know, it's it is it's it's scary, it's a, it's bad news. Like you know, I, it, was, I was thinking about so many ways. I actually I put up about everything you just said there in a tweet i'll send you on the tweet oh brilliant and uh, i actually deleted it off my facebook because i was thinking people might think i'm a bit mad by what i'm suggesting but like the more you've just spoken about it there has made me realize that this is humanly possible we need to set up all these gorgeous intensive care incubators you know yeah. by where- Hundreds, you, you know, you know the way like Mother Teresa kind of looked after all, you know, the ill babies and everything. We need to do something similar here Absolutely. in this country. And we will definitely, because there's so much pro-life in America, we could get funds by America and yeah. different pro-life people like that who, who really, like in certain states now in America, have banned abortion once the heartbeat. We can, if we set up a charity organization and that we we set them up and we pay these women to stay. Each week they say, we give them extra money. Yeah. And then we pay for them. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then they can walk away at the end of it or during it at any time they decide to stop. But the only condition is the baby has to come out alive. But they, they can think of it dead if that's what they prefer. But that's the only yes. thing. And we'll sign up hundreds and thousands of people who would love a child. And yeah. then we th- their money will charge them for the adoption and goes back into the charity to keep other babies alive. Isn't it just so beautiful what we're discussing here? Yeah. Instead of talking about abortion, we're actually coming up with it. Well, we've both come up with an idea here together where I wonder would the government be interested in listening to this? We have to do this um, as a private kind of foundation and we've just got to get the word out. The government will not back it. Will not as allow us back it. We'll probably yeah. try and block it and try and stop us because they're making money on killing the babies and selling the baby parts on. So yeah. what we're doing is completely in the reverse of their thoughts and their ethos in every way. But if we could do it and we could find a way of setting up a charity, reaching America, reaching different and setting it up and yeah. paying those women as a private enterprise, private enterprise, we pay them mm-hmm. and we pay them a salary, a really good salary for each yeah. week's appointment. And we secure whether we, we give them homes, whether we, we secure whether if they're homeless, we will look at each individual and why they're having it. And if it's homeless, we will sort, sort that out, even if we've moved them into our own homes or whatever. But we will sort out that and we will set up the thing and we will grow it and grow it and grow it. So we will save hundreds and thousands of children, please God. And God will be up by our side. Because he's not one he in this country. Yeah. And I do believe that if we set up a charity and we reach people and say, we, we're setting up this charity to save babies. And it's going to be a private enterprise. Any woman, whatever reason, we don't even need to know her story. She can come in and say, I want to be paid for being pregnant. Yeah. And we get her to find the form. That the only thing is, you can't murder, the, that you can stay and you can have it for as many weeks. Each week, we will pay you and then you can sign it at any stage you want to step out, you step out. And we have no, we will not judge you, we will not do anything. You can just step out whenever time you want to step out and that's totally free for you to step out. And then we move on and if, if they decide to keep the child, which majority of them probably will, once yeah. we solve, because majority of them, it's a, it's a 
you're in your crisis you you do stupid things you you do we all do stupid things we rush into things without thinking about things we think that this is the easiest and the quickest and the, the solution where if we can solve the majority of their problems which is housing which is a boyfriend which is you know stupid things and we show them that, that there is a life after that boyfriend there will be other men and if there isn't the child, the child will become more important to you than any man then we can solve their, their issues and we can solve their issues because we're, we're women we can do this um, and we'll get other we'll get men as well involved we'll get everybody we'll start up a charity I know I know loads of people who would love to be involved in this I swear to God another thing as well we could do is we could talk to we could team up with adoption services you know we could um sit down with them and say look this is what you think like would you be interested in you know throwing some money our way to actually we could even hire nurses and doctors who are willing to take you know the woman into you know the labor ward and say right she's now 25 weeks she doesn't want to continue the pregnancy and uh, we're gonna have to deliver this child you know through cesarean yeah. section and then we you know the baby will be in the little incubator until it's you know healthy and has you know nine well, months old so even long. Huh? all the pro-life doctors the pro-life nurses we can all take all them on i have yeah. the incubator have the proper care facility in we'll turn it into some sort of like a like a nursing home like a very private nursing home so it'll be even nicer than a hospital and they can have their meals there they can stay there and yeah. um, will have it absolutely so clean, so organized, and that they come in and they get paid. The women get paid each week and they can come and go as they like in this nursing home. And yeah. it'll be so much we'll have people who'll come in and do even things like their nails, their hair, make them feel better. Whatever the situation oh. is, we'll have like an amazing little nursing home for them. Yeah. And we'll have it so positive, so gorgeous. And the majority of them will end up keeping their babies, I guarantee that, which is perfectly fine once we, we sort out the, their crisis and their worries. And we, we can help them do we that. We can give them um, counselling. We can give them counselling whilst they're, you know, staying. Absolutely, we can hire all those. There's so many pro-life people we can get to help us do this. Yeah. Yeah. And we just need to just set up a charity fund to do this and set this up in some sort of... Um, as I said, like a nursing home or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, it's been great talking to you. So it's a great mind brainstorming with you um, on the Sarah and Bond show. Every week we will be talking about subjects like this and keep in touch every evening at 8 o'clock, or sorry, every Friday at 8 o'clock in the evening. Anyway, sorry. Thanks, honey. Talk to okay, you in a while. Talk to you You are listening to Irish News Radio at irishnews.net. Email news at irishnews.net.